Engineered to handle the most demanding networks, ultimate power, uncompromised speed. Meet the Linksys WRT 1900 AC. Hello, I'm Dimitri with Hardware Canucks, and today we're talking about Maxwell as it is rolling out for mobile, particularly for the gaming notebook section, and that is exactly why we have this MSI GE70 from the Apache series on the table. We have done a full review for this, so make sure to check it out. There's gonna be a link in the description, and also if you can click anywhere on the screen here, you will be redirected to that review. Now, we first saw Maxwell with the GTX 750 Ti. It was an incredible card because it had uh, low power draw, so power efficient, yet very powerful. And that is exactly why Maxwell is so fitting within the notebook scene. And what's better than a powerful GPU that doesn't require a lot of power um, for a notebook scene? And NVIDIA definitely has realized the potential for Maxwell to be incorporated into the gaming notebook scene as many gaming notebooks today are becoming thinner, they are becoming lighter, and therefore, you know, introducing that appropriate size for mobile use. Now, the latest Maxwell offerings are the GTX 850M and the GTX 860M. They both utilize the GM107 core with 640 quarter cores, 40 texture units, up to 2 gigabytes of memory, on a 128-bit memory bus. The main difference between the two cards are the frequency clocks. So the GTX 860M being a more higher-end model, clocked at higher clocks, over one gigahertz to be exact, while the GTX 850M is more targeted towards more power conservative, uh, yet productivity use, uh, delivering about 20% less performance at a significantly lower power draw. Now, aside from what seems to be like a very complementing relationship between power efficient GPU and the notebook scene, particularly for gaming, Maxwell also is rolling out with a few awesome features that were previously only available on desktop Kepler GPUs. So we will have Game Stream, which allows you to stream games from your notebook directly to your shield. Then we also have Shadow Play that allows you to record all your gameplay again from the notebook. A feature that was only available for Kepler based desktop GPUs is now on Maxwell for notebooks. But to complement this whole battery improvement, uh, there's a new feature that uh, NVIDIA has up its sleeve called Battery Boost. And that is exactly why we have this here, G70 from MSI, because this was the our test unit to test out to see how Battery Boost worked and how uh, efficient it was really. So Battery Boost, as NVIDIA says, is a low-level governor, so on a driver level, that um, works with your CPU, your GPU, and your memory to adjust both the frequency and the voltages of all those components to hit a certain frame target. You access the frame target through GeForce Experience, you have the slider between 20 and 50 frames a second that will be your ceiling, uh, frame ceiling. Battery Boost will work to acquire just enough power from all your resources in order to hit that frame target. I think this is very important as one of the main disadvantages for a majority of gaming notebooks uh, including this one is battery life uh, so you can if you're gaming while it's not plugged in it significantly suffers and it's reducing everything because the, the notebook is pushing out pretty much at maximum capacity that it's capable of however battery boost does what it limits the frame cap and therefore it will only acquire those resources that are needed to hit that frame cap and therefore potentially saving you um, battery life and giving you extra game time. So in theory, Battery Boost combined with Maxwell architecture that already features an extremely power efficient core and yet actually without sacrificing on performance is so to be your match made in heaven. However, in practice, while you still get uh, extra game time, there's still some limitations that we found, particularly with, uh, well, with this notebook in particular, uh, as on battery, it does underclock both the CPU and the GPU. So performance difference between on battery uh, and plugged in is quite significant. And with our unit, it was about 40% difference in performance while it was plugged in and uh, unplugged uh, without battery boost. Now, one of the things that I found interesting while testing Battery Boost is that it actually improved my frame rate. So playing Crisis 3, uh, well, this is plugged in, we get 57 frames a second on average. 
unplugging the notebook and running the exactly the same sequence, we get 25 frames a second on average with battery boost off. Turning on battery boost at 30 FPS cap and you get that fluid performance of 30 FPS pretty much consistently throughout the benchmark, which is, which is very impressive. The fact that you can still squeeze out a little bit extra power with battery boost enabled versus battery boost off and just running off the notebook as it's trying to push out as many frames as possible. I saw exactly the same behavior in Metro last light. Plugged in, we get 40 FPS on average. Unplug in notebook with battery boost off, we get 15 FPS and actually battery boost uh, turning it on to 30 FPS cap. Because it's a demanding game, it does require uh, quite a bit of power and because of the underclock while it's on battery, it hits 22 FPS on average, but still higher than it was uh, without battery boost. And this is pretty much across the board for all the games that I tried, uh, we had a higher frame rate with battery boost enabled. So in that sense, battery boost actually does give you better performance while on battery. However, um, in terms of actually expanding battery life throughout your gaming session, while NVIDIA claims to have, in certain games, improved by 200% or something like that, the results that we've experienced in certain benchmarks are not as impressive as what they claim. Uh, running the Metro Last Light benchmark on a loop, we gained only 5 minutes of extra, <laughs> extra battery life with um, 30 FPS cap. And actually increasing the FPS cap to 50 frames a second reduced the battery life by a minute. With games that do not require as much power, uh, when you can set the FPS limit to 30 and game on battery, you do gain additional uh, game time. However, it's not as uh, significant as um, you know, doubling up the lifetime of the battery or your game time. So battery life does have its advantages in terms of actually improving the frame rate from what we've experienced. However, not as significant improvement in battery life as over just gaming on battery, uh, just standard. Now, overall, we've seen that Maxwell is very promising since its early stages with the GTX 750 Ti. And finally, when it's moved on to the mobile sector or the mobile scene, it is also as impressive for its low power requirement, yet very impressive performance. Now, all of the features that have been transferred over from the desktop counterparts like GameStream, Shadowplay, GPU Boost 2.0, uh, NVIDIA Optimus technology, and Battery Boost all complement this into a very attractive package, particularly for the mobile sector, particularly for the gaming sector, uh, for that ability to game on the go, still gaining a little bit of extra time uh, while on battery, uh, improving frame rates, and well, tying this whole thing together into a very nice package overall, especially when you have to consider of the competition from Intel and AMD. Uh, this seems to be like the optimal solution at the moment. But what do you guys think of uh, Maxwell GPUs entering the mobile sector? Particularly because the form factor uh, for these type of notebooks, it's, it's quite impressive for where we've come and we're gonna actually see a lot of more thin notebooks coming out, rolling out extremely thin profiles that also feature Maxwell. Um, you know, is this perhaps something that you will consider buying because of form factor and because of the performance and perhaps uh, because of the battery life as well. So let us know how you feel about that in the comments below. Again, don't forget to check out our review of the G70 from MSI, there'll be a link in the description. Thanks for watching, leave your comments down below uh, and we'll see you in the next one.